Welcome to General Chemistry Mini Lecture Series, Lecture 27, Coffee Cup and Bomb Calorimeter. When we place uh, two objects uh, with uh, different temperatures, and then the heat flows from the higher temperature region to the lower temperature region, until both regions reach the same final temperature. If this happens in a well-insulated system, the amount of heat lost by the hot material equals the amount of the heat gained by the cold material. As we already learned from previous lectures, the heat can be calculated using the product of mass, specific heat capacity, and temperature change. Now the question is, how can the heat Q be measured? It can be measured using calorimeters. One of the calorimeter is a coffee cup calorimeter, as you can see right here. Um, and this is a, actually a constant pressure calorimeter and can measure the enthalpy change. First, what is enthalpy? Enthalpy actually is a quantity equivalent to the total heat content of a system. Uh, enthalpy is the sum of the internal energy of the system and the product of pressure and volume, which is a work, PV work. So therefore, the equation that describes enthalpy is Enthalpy equals internal energy plus the PV work. Next, enthalpy of reaction at constant pressure. Okay, if P times V equals zero, so that happens at constant pressure, then the change in enthalpy delta H simply equals the heat released or absorbed by a chemical reaction. Because of this, the change in enthalpy, or data H, equals the heat of reaction. Rxn means reaction. Most reactions done in aqueous solutions are at constant pressure and open to the atmosphere. A calorimeter can be constructed from coffee cups, preferred foam cups, so that insulation of the system can be achieved. Inside of this coffee cup, you see that's the water, and then um, your reactants, they are just uh, dissolved in water, and reactions occur right in the water inside of this uh, uh, coffee cup. And then the heat either absorbed or released by the reaction will change the temperature of water. And then we can measure that temperature. If the reaction releases heat, then the solution or the water phase will absorb that heat. So therefore the water temperature will go up. And again, the heat can be calculated using mass, specific heat capacity, and the temperature change. So since the uh, enthalpy change of reaction is at a constant pressure, we use Qp, and that is equivalent to Qrxn, or the heat of reaction, as we just discussed a while ago. In order to find the enthalpy change of reaction per mole, we simply divide the delta H of reaction value by the number of moles. The heat of the reaction can be calculated using the heat of water plus the heat of the calorimeter. So that's the sum of the two. The heat of water can be calculated using the mass, specific capacity, and the temp temperature change of water. Then the heat 
of the calorimeter can be calculated using the heat capacity of the calorimeter. Normally, it's experimentally determined, and then multiply by the temperature change. This is a, how coffee cup calorimeter works. Let's work on one example. Find out the data H reaction for the reaction when 25 milliliter of 0.5 molar silver nitrate is combined with a 25 milliliter of 0.2 molar HCl according to this reaction. The temperature change from 22.5 to 24.1 degrees Celsius. The density of the solution is 100 grams per milliliter and the specific heat capacity for water is 4.18 joules per gram and per degree Celsius. Let's see what's given. Of course, the total volume of the solution is given indirectly. We can add the two solutions, the two individual solutions volume together then that should give us the total volume of the solution, 50 milliliters. We know the initial temperature, we know the final temperature, as we can see from here. And we also know the specific heat capacity, and we also know the density. What do we need to find out? We need to find out the data H of reaction in joules per mole. If the reaction gives off heat, then the solution receives that heat. We can further rearrange those equations. Q, heat of reaction, equals negative heat of solution, and then negative MCS data T. Then the enthalpy change can be calculated using the heat of reaction divided by the number of moles. Now we are ready to solve this problem. OK, the heat of solution negative, the mass can be calculated using the volume times the density. So the total volume is 50 milliliters. The density is uh, 1 gram per milliliter. So this is M times Cs, 4.18, then times data T, initial and final temperatures difference. So now we have 334.4 joules. That's the heat of reaction. And the delta H can be calculated using heat of reaction divided by the moles of silver nitrate. The moles of silver nitrate is not given directly in the question. But we know from this key equation, molarity equals moles per liter. From here, we know moles can be calculated using molarity multiplied by liters. Okay, And therefore, the molarity is already given in the problem. 0 0.2 molar means moles per liter. And then the volume is also given. So that's 25 milliliters, but we know we have to convert that to liters. Milliliters can be canceled. Liters are also canceled. So therefore, the units left should be joules per mole. Then after taking care of the sig figs, we have 6.69 times 10 to the fourth joules per mole. Next example. A chemical reaction is allowed to occur inside a coffee cup calorimeter. The heat capacity for the calorimeter is given. First, we need to find out the heat of the calorimeter if the temperature of the calorimeter increases by 3.8 degrees Celsius during the reaction. And then find out what is the value of the heat of the reaction. What do we know? We know the calorimeter's heat capacity. We know the temperature change. Then we need to find out the heat for calorimeter and the heat of the reaction. OK. We know the heat of the calorimeter can be calculated using the 
the heat capacity of calorimeter multiplied by the temperature change and then the heat of the reaction is negative heat of calorimeter. So first, QCAL can be calculated using heat capacity of the calorimeter, 55, then multiply by the temperature change, and that gives us 209 joules. And now, let's find out the Q of reaction. Q of reaction equals negative QCAL, and that's negative 209. Now let's take a look at bomb calorimeter. Using bomb calorimeter, we can carry out constant volume calorimetry and measurement of energy change. We need to know that the energy change of any chemical reaction is the sum of heat and work. So the dot E of reaction equals Q plus W. And the work in this case, especially inside of a uh, uh, bomb calorimeter. The work in this case is actually PV work, pressure multiplying by the volume change. Under constant volume condition, data V should be zero, constant volume, which means there is no volume change. If data V is zero, then work equals zero. If work equals zero, Delta E only equals QV, which means the Q under constant volume conditions. Because the um, chemical reaction occurs in a bomb-like reactor, that's under constant volume conditions. So what bomb calorimeter measures is actually Q at constant volume and that is equal to the data E of reaction. Now the difference between the two calorimeters. In coffee cup calorimeter, the reaction takes place in water. Okay, you see reactants and uh, uh, products. So they are found actually in this cup of water. Therefore the heat released or absorbed by the chemical reaction causes a temperature change of water, then we can measure that water temperature change, and then we can calculate the heat of reaction. However, in a bomb calorimeter, the reaction takes place in this uh, closed system or insulated container. Okay, reaction occurs right here, and then the heat flow from the reaction crosses the walls of the sealed container to the water, then we can calculate the heat of reaction in that way. The main difference between the two uh, calorimeters is that bomb calorimeter can be used for reactions that involves gas and also at high temperature. Well, coffee cup calorimeter cannot do that. At high temperature, it will be melted. The material is not metal. And then if the gas evolves, this is not a closed system. There's just a lid, and the gas can be escaped. So it's not a constant volume condition. Let's work on an example. A combustion reaction of 0 0.9250 gram of uh, sucrose was carried out in a bomb calorimeter. After the reaction completed, the temperature of the water inside the calorimeter rose from 21.56 degrees Celsius to 24.65 degrees Celsius. If the heat capacity of the calorimeter is 4.9 kilojoules per degree Celsius, what is the heat of combustion of sucrose in kilojoules per mole of sucrose? Let's see what do we know. We know the mass, we know the temperature change, 
and we know the heat capacity of uh, the calorimeter. What do we need to find out? We need to find out the heat of the calorimeter and the heat of reaction. We need to recall those equations. The heat of calorimeter can be calculated using the heat capacity of the calorimeter and the temperature change. And the heat of reaction equals negative heat of calorimeter. The heat reaction in kilojoules per mole can be calculated using the heat of reaction calculated here divided by the moles of the substance. Let's solve this problem. Heat of calorimeter, we just simply replace Cal and delta T using the values given in the question. That's the heat of calorimeter. And now heat of reaction equals negative 15.14. Now, heat of reaction in kilojoules per mole, we need to use this value divided by the moles of the substance. And the moles of the substance can be calculated using the mass, then convert the mass to the mole using the molar mass of sucrose and negative. 5603 kilojoules per mole and we need to take care of the sig fig so there should be three sig figs this is the last digit in the sig fig and three is less than five we just simply drop that so therefore we should have 5600 kilojoules per mole that's the answer for this question those are the quiz questions, and I will see you guys in lecture 28.